Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Al Benir Sano Eugene Jr., and I am excited for this year, especially concerning you. Um, God has really put it on my heart to make a series about making investments into living the abundant life. If this is anything that sounds interesting to you or even consistent with what God is doing in you in this season, I would just sit back and relax and enjoy this series. So check this out. One of the greatest things I probably learned in my entire life, just one of them, is that if you wanna live the abundant life that God speaks about in his word, ultimately, there is not that you have to do a lot of things, but there are critical things, there are important things that you have to make decisions about. And the first thing, obviously, is about your relationship with God. To get the life that he promises, ultimately, you have to get in relationship with the one who made the promise. Ultimately, there is a life that God has promised you and I, um, but not everybody gets to experience this life. There's a lot of people that I've seen, and even in my own life where I found myself maybe blaming other things, maybe blaming other people, maybe blaming the circumstances, maybe blaming the way I was raised, maybe the way where I was from. But ultimately, one of the greatest truths that I've had to come and understand is I have to create the life that I want to live in. I have to make decisions to create the life that I want to live in. I have to make investments into creating the life that I want to live in. And ultimately, the goal is to live in the abundance that God promised. Now, if you're watching this video, it's safe to say that, but you probably have a relationship with God. And there's something a little more in your walk with God that you will experience when you realize that it's not just you simply praying for things. But there are things that God leads you to do. And when he leads you to do these things, you can call those things instructions. You can call those things commands. You can call those things God is speaking to you to do something. Whatever you like to call that in your personal journey, I want you to know that on the other side of those things is simply obedience. And when we obey God, it's ultimately because, one, he's our Lord and everything he says to do. One thing that's special that I've learned is God doesn't make suggestions. If he tells you to do something, that's just what he's telling you to do. And God doesn't waste words. And ultimately, on the other side of those commands is obedience. But when we obey God, it's for the simple fact that he does have our best interest at heart. God wants to protect us. God wants to love us. God wants to experience freedom. God wants us to experience an abundant life. And the reality is when we look around, especially at believers in their walk, we could sometimes say it doesn't look like they're experiencing abundance. It doesn't look like they're experiencing this increase that God speaks about, but they're doing everything right. They always pray and they always go to church, but for some reason, it doesn't seem like they're experiencing or displaying the fruit of the Spirit. Now, in your walk, ultimately, the abundance starts with having the Holy Spirit living inside of you. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and long-suffering or self-control. So ultimately, every Christian needs to be displaying these fruit. The Amplified says that those fruit are the results of God's presence living within us. So when God lives in us, there will be evidence of that by the fruit we display. But ultimately, when we have the Holy Spirit, we can literally have an opportunity to hear from God and obey God. The Bible says people who don't have his spirit, they can't even obey him. They don't have that opportunity to really even hear his voice in the way that we do. Um, because ultimately, God quickens us, but then also empowers us to do what he just told us to do. It's really beautiful. It's a long story, but that's not what this video is for. This video is for you to get to a place where you recognize that it's time to obey God because your life is at stake. It's time to not let things just keep happening to you. But you start living in a way where you recognize that your decisions matter. Who you keep around you matters. Where you spend your time matters. What inspires you matters. What you're watching on the daily matters. How you steward your finances, that matters. Listen, who you give your heart to matters. Who you associate yourself with or trust matters. Who you give your ear to matters. These are all things that are so important, but one of my favorites, your values, they matter. And all of these things you will see will be so consistent in making investments 
and to the life that you really want to live. And on the basis or the foundation of those things, you have to have, number one, a great awareness of who you are. Who are you? You're not your friends. You're not even your parents. You're not your brother or your sister, even if you were compared to them. You are not them. Guess what? You're not even anybody in the Bible. So granted, somebody probably told you, oh, you're like the next David. Oh, you're the next Ruth. No, you are you. And you are the next you. You're not your favorite celebrity. You're not your pastor. You're not your mentor. You, you're, Listen, you are you. But you have to come to really get to know you. But here's the hardest part. You don't really know who you are. The Bible says the heart is wicked amongst all things. Who could ever know it? That means you don't even know who you are. You don't even know some of the deepest, dark, the, the deepest parts, but you don't even know who that is. So who can give you insight into who you really are? Only God can. One simple question. Holy Spirit, I want to begin this journey and really live in the life you called me to live. And first, I'm coming to understand I have to get to know me. What are my values? What do I value? Who do I value? Where am I going? Where are you leading me? What are my gifts? What is my personality? Why did you give me this personality? What was my story like? How was I raised? How did that correlate with this? How did this get me here? What is it about me that you really see? Why did you send me here? These questions you need to be asking God right now because this is not the time to be living in a way where you're letting life pass you by or you're trying to live in other people's expectations of you or living out other people's dreams, this is the time for you to come to get to know who you are so we can begin to make investments in the life that you know God has called you to live in. I pray you enjoy this series and I pray you enjoy the rest of everything that we're gonna be able to talk about. And some of the most interesting things we're gonna hear about, I pray they bless you, you write them down, you take notes, and the first thing that we're gonna discuss is meaningful relationships. One of the first investments I realized that we have to make to begin to invest in the life that we know God calls us to live is we have to have meaningful relationships. And here are the two most meaningful relationships you'll ever have. One, with God. And then two, with people.